thankfulness in an ungrateful age. I want you to think about the age you're living in. You're living in the day of the unthankful. Let me prove it to you. The Bible says, 2 Timothy 3, This know also that in the last days, we've been in the last days ever since Jesus came, but we are now in the last days of the last days. Perilous, dangerous is what it means. Time shall come. Why? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. When you've got the majority of people walking around like that, you're in a dangerous time to be living, a very dangerous time to be living. How did it get this way? How did it get this way? Dear Lord, we pray you will speak to us through your word in a special way. We thank you so much for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Could it have something to do? See, the Bible never does anything accidentally. The Holy Spirit that knows how many hairs are upon your head does not put a single word in this Bible just arbitrarily. So how do we get to this place where we have such an unthankful generation? Could it have something to do with what comes before it? What happens when you raise disobedient children and allow them to stay disobedient? Do they grow up to be thankful people? Unless God gets a hold of them with His rod through the uh, woodshed of life, you're going to end up with unthankful people. And look at everything that comes before it. Blasphemers, proud. That's where most things start. See. <clears throat> Unthankfulness is associated with a lot of bad things. But sometimes in the Bible, unthankfulness comes from a root sin. Or let me put it this way. I said it wrong. Thankfulness, uh, uh, the lack of thankfulness sometimes comes from, let me just read it, Romans 1, because that when they knew God, this is what happens when you eat Thanksgiving dinner and then preach. Romans 1, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful. My point that I'm trying to say is that ingratitude is a root cause of so many rotten things in life that when you end up unthankful, so much bad is going to come from your life. That if you would have had some gratitude for your parents, a gratitude for the light God gave you, a gratitude for the things God gave you, Oh, that would affect so many decisions that you make in life, you know. But look what happens to a whole generation. He says in Romans 1, Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was dark darkened. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. In other words, you say you don't want prayer in school, you don't want God in your life. Sometimes God just backs off. Okay, run it yourself. Now, he's always in control in one sense, but he's not running this earth like he's running heaven right now. And you're to pray for that day to come when he runs the earth like he's running heaven. And so sometimes you push God out, and he'll just walk away, so to speak. And uh, things fall apart. And so the culture has gone to the most perverse twisted how do you end up with homosexuality and people dishonoring their bodies the way they do just trashing their bodies where the culture is based upon just trash your body trash your purity be a pervert i'm gonna tell you there it is right there neither were they thankful you don't know where you will end up if we don't learn gratitude if we don't learn to try to turn the tide to a new generation that understands Hey, thank you for that. Thank you for the things that you've given me. Thank you. And then they can see God and thank God. So we need to always be thankful. But not just feel thankful. But thanksgiving means that you express 
thanks to God. God wants you to do more than just say, oh, I'm thankful. He wants you to tell him you're thankful and tell others that you're thankful to God. That's what Thanksgiving is. It's not a holiday. Thanksgiving is a time when you get together and have Thanksgiving to God. But Thanksgiving should be something we do every day, right? Give thanks to God. Psalms uh, 95 says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. That's one reason you go to church. That's one reason you go to church. Make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. And here's why you are to give thanks to God. For the Lord is a great God. Is he not, God? Is he not a great God? And a great king above all gods. Sometimes little g God means leaders. It means like presidents and mayors and all the other things. God is a great king above all gods, above all the angels, above all earthly leaders. Harden not your heart as in the day of provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, and to whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. I guess what I'm bringing before you right now is the lack of thanksgiving can cause a hardness and stubbornness of your heart, which is going to end up with you not entering into God's rest, that's the coming millennial reward. But even in this life, you're not going to rest the way you would enjoy in God. Uh, thanksgiving does something to a person. It changes a person. Oh, pray that God will give you a thankful heart. Pray that God would make you thankful. Why? That He's a great God. Lord, we thank You You're a great God. We thank You that You're a great King. Praise God for that. We've already looked a little bit at where ingratitude leads. It leads to the culture being trashed into homosexuality. It leads to dangerous days, dangerous times. It leads to people missing the kingdom because they got stubborn, hard hearts. Deuteronomy is just going to put this into perspective for you. Deuteronomy 8, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and art full, who's full? Amen, a few of you are full, and has built goodly houses and dwelt therein. I've watched people do this over the years. I've watched people start humble, and you, you know, this is the problem with America. A lot of good people started America that believed in a work ethic and working hard. Well, when you work hard, you begin to prosper. The problem is when you begin to prosper, there's a danger that you're no longer thankful to God, and then all the curses begin to happen. So, then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And thou say in thy heart, my power and the might of my hand hath gotten me this wealth. Isn't that dangerous? Wow, isn't that sad? Where does ingratitude come from? Doesn't it begin in pride? Doesn't it begin in pride? <clears throat> Second Timothy 3 said, they'll be lovers of their own selves, boasters, proud, disobedient to parents, he says, unthankful. I want you to think of the bitter backsliders that you might have been at one time or you might know right now. They're not thankful people. Those that have backslidden from God and what they used to be, they're not walking around with joy and thanksgiving to God and gratitude. Oh, no, 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 no. In fact, it's almost impossible to be thankful when you are a constant victim in your mind. See, you study Cain in the Bible. You study some of these bitter spirits. Um, and the Bible said they'll walk in the way of Cain in the last days. It's almost impossible when you are victimizing yourself and playing the victim and you will blame all your behavior that you do that's bad on others and you end up very, very ungrateful. Ungrateful. I'm not some great fan of movie stars, and but but there was a 
a movie star so-called, Brooke Shields, uh, many, many years ago, and uh, she's a lot older now. But they asked her recently in the news, what do you think about what happened to you? I, I mean, think about it. You were put in movies when you were young so people could lust after you as a child. And, and they went on and on and on. And she admitted all this stuff was bad. But it's amazing how she responded. She says, it's, it's not in my nature to be a victim. Boy, she shut him up really, really quick. That was an amazing thing. She's not some great model of Christian virtue. You understand? I'm not giving her to you as a model of being. But, but if a movie star can grow up, be abused that way, to, to, to be uh, made into that type of situation. But she says, you know, it's not my nature to be a victim. I, I, I'm not going to allow myself to go through life bitter, calling my. Do you realize what that would do to your life? That's what they teach you today. Be a victim, be a victim. And, and that's what's wrong with America today. Nobody's thankful because everybody's a victim. I want you to think of Joseph in the Bible and so many others that really were abused, that really went through hard times, but never played the victim. Though they were victims, they never played the victim. They never lost their thanksgiving to God. They never lost their gratitude to God, their joy to God. And uh, even when they came and said, we're sorry for what we did to you, he says, God meant it for good. He doesn't mean it's excused. What he means is, listen, it was hard. I went through suffering, but God brought good things out of it. Okay? God, God used it to bring me to where I am today and make me what I am today. See, we got to quit playing the victim, excusing sin. Afflictions will come, and they'll either make you or break you in life, and you have to decide. You have to decide. I want you to look at David. He says in Psalms 119, the bands of the wicked have robbed me. And he's going to go on for verse after verse talking about what, what a victim he is and how he's not responsible for any of his bad conduct. No, not David. He says the bands of the wicked have robbed me, but... You know, whatever you say happened to you in life, let there be a but right there. You know what I mean? But God's been good to me. God preserved me through it. God taught me some lessons even through the sins of others. I said, the bands of wicked have robbed me. They were wicked to do that. But I have not forgotten thy law. You know what a lot of people do when they go through all types of troubles? They say, forget God. Look what I went through. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. David said, I'm going to get out of bed and thank God. I'm going to get out of bed just thank God. I am a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Some of those afflictions were because of his own sin. And it's good that God taught him, listen, son, you're not going to get away with things. And uh, I'm going to show you mercy, but you're going to learn there's consequences for sin. And David says, it's good, God, you taught me. Some of the afflictions were from the sins of others. And he was unjustly afflicted. But I believe David gives it all to God like Joseph. And he never lets it get him bitter. He went through some confusing times, like when he was in Ziklag and things like that. But I'm going to tell you what. You better keep your focus with God. Keep your joy. Keep your reality in your mind that God is good. And let us practice thanksgiving. Let us practice. Psalms 92 says it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Not just be thankful, but give thanks. And to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord, that means they're here just thanking God and singing, shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Folks, let's get planted, amen? You're going to go through some trials in church because church is made up of a bunch of sinners. Do you know that? On their way to glory and God working in them and God molding them and God trying to work that sin out of them 
and uh, you're going to meet some sinners and they're going to buck you and you're going to buck them back and, 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 and you're going to have, and, and Paul says if you bite and devour one another, you better be, be, behave because you're going to end up devouring and being destroyed. And the point is, don't let the devil scare you away from being planted in the house of God. Say, I go to church not to always get my way, not to always just be treated exactly the way I want to be treated. I go to church to thank God. I go to church to help people grow and let them help me grow. And it's a give and take. It's a process, isn't it? Oh, what a blessing. God promises you. You get planted, you'll be bringing forth fruit to God in old age. What a Can I show you somebody real quick that brought forth fruit in old age? Daniel. Do you know Daniel went through a hard time? How would you like to grow up a young man, a, a teenager, and be serving God, and all of a sudden your country ends? It happens to be your day, and you get stolen as a slave and carried away to another. You know, China and Russia are joining together right now. And do you know if America, I tell you what, is so ripe to judgment right now. Do you know how ripe we are for judgment? Do you know that... We're living in a dangerous time. I pray God has mercy upon this nation. But do you understand how close you are to being shipped away to China somewhere? Do you understand that? I don't think we understand how close you are to being captured by the Chinese or something like that, some other country. And so Daniel was a good boy serving God. And the next thing you know, he's being captured. But he started from a young age. He says, I'm not, even over here in Babylon, I'm not going to defy my God. I, I, I don't care what will happen. Well, they'll take your head off. It doesn't matter. Then I'll just die. But I'm not going to eat that, 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 that gross stuff. I'm not going to do what they're doing. No, I'm not going to do it. Well, by the time 70 years had come, and another king now is taken over, Daniel's an old man. And it says it pleased Darius. See, that's a whole other kingdom. He's now in the, in the days of Persia to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. Remember the book of Esther? And over these presidents, and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first. Woo! Talk about reign and high and mighty. Now, when da Daniel's been through it. And now he's pretty much reigning over the world. And people got jealous of him. He said, I can't believe that, Daniel. Who is he? Let's see if we can talk the king into making a law against Daniel for his religion. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Basically, they said, you cannot pray to any other God. You can't pray to any other God. So you know what Daniel did? He went home. And he opened his window. And he got down on his knees and says, God, I give you thanks. Where everybody could see him. You know what Daniel's doing? They threw him in a lion's den as an old man. And Daniel survived. Daniel survived. Daniel survived. He's still bringing forth fruit in old age. Why don't you decide to give thanks to God and give thanks to God by not only your lips and by your knees, but with your life and say, I'm going to dedicate my life to thank God for giving me life. Thank God for saving me. I'm not going to play the victim. I'm going to serve my God. Real, real quickly, I want to show you some other things to be thankful for. We have saw to be thankful because God's such a great God. But what about Psalms 107? Give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. He's, he's not just powerful, he's good. His mercy endures forever. Can you give thanks that you're saved and his mercy will endure forever? That he died on the cross for you? And, and, and you can never, ever, ever in one sense be unrighteous in his sight because of the debt that's been paid in full. Now there's a judgment for believers as far as our walk and reward. But as far as your eternity goes, we are saved by grace through faith and praise God for His mercy. It endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you've been saved, you ought to go around telling everybody, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved for all eternity and God's mercy endures forever. But we have the redeemed from the hand of the enemy. 
Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of man. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. You come in, you sacrifice your time, you sacrifice the giving of your gifts, you give offerings, you give praises of your mouth, you come in and sing songs. You know what? We're here because of God. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here, I assume, and I hope. It's because of God. We believe in God. It's about Jesus Christ. We worship Him. He's Lord of Lords, King of Kings. He's coming again to reign. It's all about Him. We come to church to give Him thanks publicly as a church. This is His idea, not mine. Make a joyful noise, says Psalms 100, unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know you that the Lord, He is God. It is He that made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving. That would be the temple there with prophetic implications. It would be church today. And into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him. Bless His name. For the Lord is good. That's one reason. His mercy is everlasting. That's the second reason. And His truth endures to all generations. You got a King James Bible? you got truth today. God, through the blood of the martyrs, through Tyndale getting choked and burned at a stake, said, God, open the eyes of the king of England. I've tried to put your Bible in English. And the king James says, I haven't perfected it yet, but I did the best I could. And as they died, as he's dying, choking, and they burned him, another king came up named King James. And God opened his eyes and says, we're going to finish that book. We're going to finish it. And the King James translators came and they said, you know what? We didn't start this thing, but we're going to perfect it. We're going to perfect it. And you've got a Bible now. You've got truth. Salvation by grace. The second coming of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ. The great reward of the thousand year kingdom. You have so many things that he's given us in that book. Can't you ever give thanks to God that his truth endures to all generations? Even this wicked, unthankful generation. There's still God's truth around. Amen? You can still find it. Wow. Psalms 30, sing unto the Lord, O you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Think about that. You ever thought about how holy God is? God, thank you that you're holy. Thank you that you cannot lie. You could, you're omnipotent. You could do everything, but you can't lie. That means if I read something here and you got a promise for me, you can't lie. Well, that's awesome, ain't it? God's holy. God's holy. He's not a liar. He's holy, pure. Aren't you glad God's not filthy and impure? Aren't you glad? He's not like the gods of the heathens, you know, a bunch of sinners, you know. Psalms 97.10, Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous. And give thanks at the remembrance of His holiness. There it is again. Remembrance of His holiness. God, we give thanks to you because you're great. We give thanks to you because you're good. We give thanks to you because your mercy endures forever. We give thanks to you because your truth has endured into all generations. We give thanks to you, God, because you're holy. Oh, you're holy, God. Thank you. You got to give thanks for those that are serving God. Paul said in Romans 16, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, and to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. You ought to give thanks for those that are willing to die for Jesus. And I tell you, they'll come minister to you when you're in prison. They'll risk their life to, to just to, to edify you and bless you and encourage you, you know. When you're in the middle of a battle, they'll call you up and say, how are you doing? What can I do? What can I do for you in the middle of this battle? You know, you, you, you go to pray, you say, well, what do I thank him for? Why don't you thank him for some godly Christians he's brought in your life? Why don't you thank him for, if you have godly parents, why don't you thank him for that? Why don't you thank him for those that are serving God, that are examples to you and a blessing to you in your life? God, thank you for bringing these people into my life. 
Paul says in Thessalonians, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. The Thessalonians were standing by faith. Paul says, oh, I thank God for you. I thank God I mentioned, I mentioned you in our prayers. Thank God that you're standing for him and encouraging me. What about your food? For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. I take that to mean the things God meant to be food. You know what I mean? It's sanctified by the word. What did he tell you to eat? Uh, and by prayer... So when the Word of God tells you something's good to eat and God intended it for food, and then you tell God, I thank you for it, ooh, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. I wonder how many people eat in America and never thank God for what they're eating. And I can just sum all this up by saying, with Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5, in everything give thanks. Every situation of your life, everything you're going through, everything that he's done for you. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I think a lot of young people say, I just wish I knew the will of God for my life. You know, there's a Bible verse for that. What, there's a Bible verse to tell me what the will of God is for my life? Yeah. Yeah, I got a Bible verse. You mean you're really going to show me right now what God wants to do with my life? Yeah, right now. The will of God concerning you is that in everything I want you to start giving thanks. Act like it. Be grateful to God. It'll change your whole life. And God will begin to speak to you like he has never. God will begin to lead you and work with you. You will not believe that's the thing that's been holding back God right there. An ungrateful heart. To be raised in a country that you've been raised in with the blood of your forefathers. To be given Christian parents. To be given the truth. To, to be in a land where you could hold a Bible in your hand and whatever's left of this country, you still got some liberty. There's some wicked movies that you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You are an abominable person if you dare watch it. You are a sick, disgusting person if you would sit and watch such wicked things. But there was a boy in Korea that sat down and watched a bad movie that North Korea didn't want him to watch because they didn't want him to, to, to learn anything about bad governments. They took him out to the firing squad. He's about to be executed for watching a movie. You say, whoa, America's not that bad yet. Hey, you be thankful for the liberties that you have. And God never intended you use your liberty to sin. What have your forefathers passed down to you? Last Wednesday, we looked at the daughters of Zelophehad. Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, and they stood before Moses, and the whole congregation, by the door of the tabernacle. They said, Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family, because he has no son? Give us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. In other words, give us the inheritance. We don't have a brother. Has God passed down anything to you? Praise God. God praised the daughters of Zelophehad. God said they have asked a good thing. They care about the inheritance that's been passed down. What has God passed down to you? What truth has he passed down into your hands? See, it's a sad thing to me if we work and labor and find out truth and spend our life to find out what's wrong and what's right in the midst of a backslidden, blind, wicked, adulterous generation and we discover many things and they're taken for granted, see? Nobody cares. Who cares what these things are? I don't care. No, you ought, to, you ought to prize the inheritance that God gave you here in America. That, that what the churches have left you down through the ages. You ought to be willing to stand for the principles that your founding fathers died for. Christian and political. You ought to be speak up for them. You ought to say, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to allow these things to be trashed. My founding fathers died to give me what I have today. I'm not going to sit back and allow a bunch of woke, sick, disgusting people that are acting like they're filled with the devil to just take this all away and throw it away. I'm going to at least stand up and say, that's not right. That's wrong. 
I went to jail because they wanted to march a bunch of transvestites downtown Fort Worth with the mayor, and they wanted to in front of a bunch of kids, and everybody's going to sit back and say, Happy Thanksgiving. This is beautiful. I said, It's not right. This is not right. This is disgusting. Our founding fathers didn't die for this, and I had the liberty to do it. We need to do more of it. We need to stand up. Don't just allow things to be trash that God gave you. Don't allow God's standards. Don't allow the truth that our founding fathers gave us to just go by the wayside. Oh, there goes another godly practice and standard. It's all gone, brother. There it goes. Used to be in our churches 10 years ago. It's gone now. We got a godly heritage, a goodly heritage. It says in Psalm 16, the lines are falling into me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. God's given me some good things that we've got. Psalm 61 says, O God, thou hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thank you, God. Psalms 119, thy testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever. Oh, there's people that served God. They warned about your generation. But they prayed that you would be one of the ones that would take their truths that they labored to deliver unto you. Why aren't they the rejoicing of your heart? Why don't you care? Why don't you care? It says in Isaiah 54, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Woo, I want to claim that one right there. God, that's a goodly heritage. Thank you, God. I claim that verse right now, and I pray that I'm one of these servants of the Lord that are serving you, and that you will let that be true. But you know, the Bible says in Proverbs 15, a fool despises his father's instruction. These are things your father learned and wants to give you. They ought to be precious to you. They've been passed down from our forefathers down throughout the ages. And God delivers them to you. But he that regardeth reproof is prudent. Let's not be as Esau. It says in Hebrews 12, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. He didn't care about his inheritance. What instructions have you sold? Because you don't care. Just give me some, give me a little bit of por porridge, whatever the devil's going to give me, a little bowl of beans. It's okay. I'll sell out God's truth. I'll sell out what our founding fathers gave us. I'll trash the standards. I don't care. I don't care about the old paths that give us rest. I don't care about the blood of Jesus and the blood of the martyrs and the blood of the Baptists that were beaten and died to give us this country. I don't care about any of it. I just want to go live my life and sin and be selfish and play my computer games and dress like a harlot. It doesn't matter just but because I'm special. It's all about me. No, let's, let's be thankful. Let's be thankful. This, this isn't supposed to be a mean message. <laughs> I, I just want you to understand. Let's close our eyes and pray. Dear Father, as long as life be in us, we want to praise your holy name. We want to thank you for your holiness, your goodness, your mercy, your truth. The Christians that you've given us that are living holy around us. The help that you've given us by those willing to die and suffer, Father, to stand and help. God, we want to thank you that we don't have it as bad as so many Christians do around the world. Be with them, Lord. Strengthen them. Father, we pray that we'd have thankful hearts, not self-pitying, play the victim hearts, resentful and bitter, and just going through life blaming everything we do on something in our past or some, somebody else. Holy Jesus, forgive us of our sins. Forgive the young people, Lord, who might have taken for granted and not really cared so much like the daughters of Zelophehad. had. Let us care about our birthright. Let us be glad that we were born into a Christian family. 
Let us be glad that, that, that we've had delivered unto us some wonderful things. And may you empower them, Lord, strengthen them, encourage them to do even mightier things. In Jesus' name, thank you, God. Amen. You are dismissed.